Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills, this should be a very easy problem to solve without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. We have five times parentheses, 18 minus eight divided by two to the third power times two and parentheses. Now this is a multiple choice uh, question and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 30, B is 50, C is 80, and D is 120. All right, so the only rule here again is no calculators. But uh, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the problem. And uh, it looks like a pretty basic math problem. Hopefully, uh, most of you out there might be saying, this is easy, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, indeed it is, but it's also easy to make a mistake. Matter of fact, some of you are gonna be shocked that you're gonna get the wrong answer. But let's take a look at that right answer right now. The correct answer here is C, which is 80. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of the order of operations. Now, things like subtraction, division, multiplication, powers, parentheses, well, particularly, um, uh, you know, operators like sub, uh, subtraction operators, division operators, multiplication, and addition. These are what we call mathematical operations. But uh, the key to doing this problem is to do it uh, in the right order. Because if you um, are saying, well, you know what? I like addition first. I'm just gonna add things and then maybe I'll multiply and then I'll divide. Or maybe some of you like to divide first, and then you like to subtract second. Well, you see here, we're gonna end up with all different sorts of answers. There's only uh, one correct specific order that we need to take in order to figure out the right answer. All right, so really this is kind of the main idea of this video, assuming you understand what powers are, but we're gonna get into all of this right now. And if you got this wrong, well, I'm actually happy that you made this mistake now because I think I can clear up any confusion you might have about this basic math concept called the order of operations. All right, so here is our problem. Now, obviously, um, we have these uh, multiple choice options. Now, what if you were facing this on a test or an exam for those of you that might still be in school? So you might be saying, I know what I would do, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I would guess, and I would say that's exactly what you should do, unless you're going to get penalized uh, for getting the wrong answer. And there are some exams like the SAT or ACT where you do have to consider uh, guessing because sometimes it's better to leave a question blank. But for most exams, it's better to actually guess. And here you have a one out of four chance uh, to get this right. So you have a 25% chance of, you know, um, you know, getting this correct on uh, a quiz and exam or whatnot. So uh, if some of you actually said, you know what, 80 looks pretty good and you got this right. Well, that's fantastic. Indeed, you were lucky. But we want to make sure that you understand how to actually do this problem. All right, now before I get into the order of operations, because I'm going to uh, quickly explain this, let's just review powers here for a second, because if you know how to subtract numbers and multiply numbers and uh, add numbers, well, these are just basic math operations, but this right here could confuse uh, someone out there. So two to the third power. What does this mean? Well, let's just write a little bit bigger here so we can see. So when we're looking at powers and exponents, and this little thing right here is called the exponent. And this thing's called the base, okay, of a power. So this is the base, this is the exponent, and the entire thing is a power. So we would say two to the third power. All right, so what this means is take two and multiply it by itself three times. So two times two times two. So we have three twos. Now two times two times two is eight. So this is how we evaluate powers. All right, so if you were confused about uh, uh, powers, and maybe some of you were, 
well, this is how you evaluate powers. And now, hopefully, if you have the uh, right understanding about the order of operations, you're, you should be able to get this right. So let's go ahead and review the order of operations, which means we need to review this lovely little acronym right here. All right, so PEMDAS, this thing has been around forever, and most people learned uh, this phrase or something pretty similar to it. Now, what does this stand for? Well, obviously, these letters stand for something. I'm going to explain this in a second. But this is our checklist to uh, basically do the correct, uh, do a math problem with various operations. Like if a math problem has addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, or just even two operations, maybe like addition and division, we need to know uh, what to do first. Do we do addition first? Do we do division first? Or does it really make a difference? Indeed, it does make a difference. And we need to follow this checklist or this specific order. All right, so this goes from left to right. And uh, these letters stand for something, but before I tell you what they stand for, there's a lovely little mnemonic, a little memory aid that will help you remember PEMDAS, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, so I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase anyways. So let me go ahead and tell you what this stands for. All right, so P stands for parentheses. So if you have parentheses uh, in a math problem, and of course our problem actually has parentheses, well, you need to do what's inside those uh, parentheses first. Now, it's not just these type of parentheses. It could be these kind of brackets like this or squiggly brackets. Technically, what this uh, means is grouping symbols. So if I have 2 divided by uh, 4 times 7, I can put parentheses around... Uh, you know, any two numbers here, I can make, uh, I can do this, so I'm grouping these numbers together, or I can do this, and I'm grouping these numbers together. So depending upon where the parentheses are at, you know, you're going to end up with different answers, right? Because you're going to start uh, inside of uh, parentheses. Now, if your problem has multiple parentheses, like parentheses and then brackets and then squiggly brackets, what do you do there? Well, you start from the innermost parentheses, and then you just continue to expand. All right, so that's what P stands for. Now, sometimes a math problem will not have parentheses, so you just kind of, you know, look at your checklist and like, all right, no parentheses, continue to move forward from left to right. All right, so what does E stand for? Well, E stands for exponents. So you can kind of think of this as power. So like two to the third power, this would be a situation where we'd have to consider E. Again, this is the exponent. Now, it would be kind of uh, confusing if we had P and then another P here. Some people might say, oh, we should uh, do, you know, parentheses and the parentheses again. No, E stands for exponents. That's why uh, we have E and not P. All right, so uh, this is our checklist so far. And again, uh, if you have parentheses but no powers, just skip that and move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is probably one of the most confused things in basic math. Now, most people are going to say, well, before I even actually tell you this, let me just tell you what M, D, A, and S stand for. So you probably already guessed, well, this is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, if this is a checklist from left to right, you might be saying, all right, perfect, Mr. YouTube Math Man. We're going to do all multiplication if we have multiplication, and then we're going to move on to any division, take care of that, and then addition and subtraction, et cetera, et cetera. That would make sense, but that's not how it works. And this uh, you know, tends to get a lot of students frustrated. We're like, what are you talking about? This is why I don't like math. It's so confusing. You just told me it's a checklist from left to right. Well, it is, but uh, this part of the checklist is treated a bit differently. All right, so we have to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. So we have multiplication and then division. We're going to do this. But if we have division and then multiplication, we do it in this order. Okay, so if you have both multiplication and division in a problem, you have to ask yourself, hey, what do I see first from left to right? And take care of that. Okay, oftentimes it could be division if division comes first from left to right. And addition and subtraction work the same way. All right, so now that you have a basic understanding of how to evaluate a numeric power, as long as you... um you know, can add, subtract, multiply, and divide basic numbers, you should be able to figure out this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to work here. So here is our problem, and uh, you're looking at it, and you're saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, what should I do? Well, let's break out this PEMDAS checklist and just think about it one step at a time. All right, so again, we're going to go from left to right. So let's uh, see here. Do we have any parentheses? Indeed, we do, right? So we're going to have to focus 
um, the parentheses, and that means just you're going to have to simplify everything inside of the parentheses before we can consider multiplying by 5. All right, so once we've done that, uh, kind of uh, focused our attention on this part of the problem, we just have to start scanning through it and be like, all right, do I have any more parentheses? No. Do I have any powers? Yes, I do. All right, so you're going to do this. Do you have any multiplication and division? Yes, you have division and multiplication. What are you going to do first from left to right? Well, you're going to do the division, right? And then you're going to do the, I'm sorry, yes, you're going to do the division after the powers and then multiplication. And then we're going to finish up with subtraction here. And then we'll have one number inside of the parentheses. And then we can multiply by five. So I'm pretty much telling you uh, kind of the checklist here. So if you want to go ahead and see if you can put this all together, just pause the video, take out a piece of paper, and you know you should be able to get the right answer in like, uh, I don't know, maybe a minute. But let's go ahead and go through this right now. All right, so we're always going to keep this PEMDAS in mind. And our first step is going to be uh, exponents, right? This power inside of the parentheses. So let's go ahead and get to that right now. All right, so here's our parentheses. And we have to do 2 to the third power. This is what? 2 times 2 times 2. That's what this means. So this is going to be 8. Now, notice here, I'm not um, writing too many steps. I'm actually just writing one specific step. And this is the correct way to do mathematics. So here's our problem. And take one step. So, uh, you know, someone like a teacher or yourself or anyone else can read your work. Okay, so if you can't read your work, remember math is a language and you're telling a story of how you uh, how we went from the problem to the solution. Okay, and, and you're just going to do this one step at a time. So don't try to take too many steps. You'll definitely confuse yourself, even if you understand the concepts. All right, so now we have five parentheses, 18 minus 8 divided by 8 times 2. Now, in your uh, brain, you're thinking PEMDAS, but if you have to write it down again, all right, you're like, all right, let's write down PEMDAS. All right, so I'm inside the parentheses. We took care of the powers. Is there any multiplication or division? Yes. Okay, what do I see first from left to right? I see the division first. Okay, so you're not going to do the multiplication. You're going to do the division. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So that's going to be 8 divided by 8. So we have 5 times, or uh, this means multiplication, so 5 times parentheses, 18 minus 8 divided by 8 times 2. So uh, 8 divided by 8 is 1. Okay, so now, you know, we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here with this problem. So uh, we're still not done inside of the parentheses, and we have multiplication and subtraction, and multiplication will always trump subtraction, so we have to take care of this right now. So 1 times 2, of course, is 2. So let's take that next step which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just love the way I kind of sneak that in? Well, I need your help, okay? And uh, I'm not afraid to ask for help, okay? And hopefully you're not as well. If you're struggling in math, if you're having a tough time in math or in anything you're doing, you should try to get some help, okay? Well, certainly you want to try to figure things out the best you can on your own. But, uh, you know, I'm asking for your help because I have another great word over here, and that is a goal, okay? My goal is to reach as many people as possible to help them in mathematics. So I actually need your help in order to help others, okay? So if you like this content, it really does go, uh, really does go a long way with YouTube. Uh, for you hitting that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Typically, I post two to three. Um, kind of lately here, I've been doing about two videos per day. And I like to kind of mix it up because I cover basic math all the way into some advanced math topics like calculus. So that's a huge you know, swath of, of math. So I try to reach um, a lot of people at these various levels. So I'm posting a lot of content all the time. By the way, if you are interested in my best math instruction, my full main math courses. I'm gonna leave links to those in the description of this video. All right, so let's get back to this problem because really there's not much to do. So remember, keep in mind, we're not using a calculator here, okay? So we're gonna to have to do this one step at a time. So uh, we're still inside parentheses. So in terms of PEMDAS, we haven't finished uh, this part of the problem. Okay, so we're still working on the parentheses and we're just constantly reviewing this checklist. So we're not done with the parentheses part until we get this down to one value. All right, so we have one times two is two. Remember, multiplication is always going to come first before subtraction. 
All right, so 1 times 2 is 2, so now this is going to be 5 times 18 minus 2. And 18 minus 2 is what? Well, 18 minus 2 is 16. All right, so at this point in the problem, there's only uh, one thing left to do, and that is to multiply 5 times 16. But in terms of PEMDAS, all right, now you can see I've already done the work here. We'll have a discussion about this in a second. Uh, your This P part on this checklist isn't finished until you get... Uh, you know, your parentheses down to just one value, okay? Once we're done with that, you're kind of done with the parentheses part, unless you have multiple uh, grouping symbols in your problem. All right, so now this comes down to your ability to multiply 5 times 16. Now, the answer is 80, and uh, how can you do this problem? Well, you could do it just using some old-school, basic, uh, you know, multiplication, you know, all this stuff that we learned a long time ago. And if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I learned that way back in 1952 or 1967 or 19, like for myself, I was doing this like maybe in 1976, whatever the case is, uh, you know, for most of us, it's been a long, long time when it comes to arithmetic. So you're going to lose these basic math skills if you don't practice this stuff. And obviously, we're always using our calculators. So it's not a bad idea for you to review your arithmetic skills. So here you can go 16 times 5. See if you can come up with the answer of 80. But I'm going to show you a cool way of doing multiplication using the distributive uh, property. And this is a big property in algebra. But uh, this is a great um, kind of opportunity to explain this right here. So one thing you can do to multiply 5 times 16 is we can split uh, 16 up in any different sorts of combinations. In other words, we can think of 16 as 10 plus 6. I can think of uh, 16 as 20 minus 4. Or I can think of 16 as 8 plus 8 or 1 plus 1 plus 1. I could go on for 16 once. In other words, we can come up with any combination of uh, sums and differences to get to 16. Now, you, what you want to do here is think of some really useful uh, combinations uh, where we can multiply using easy numbers. So I'm going to use 10 plus 6. So 10 plus 6 is 16. So we can have an equivalent problem here uh, of uh, 5 times 16. Hold on, I'm kind of stumbling on my words here for a second. We can have an equivalent problem of 5 times 16 as 5 times 10 plus 6, because 10 plus 6 is 16. All right, so the distributive property uh, basically states that the number, okay, outside of this parenthesis, okay, if you can multiply it by a sum or difference, we simply just multiply this number into the respective numbers inside of the parenthesis. So this is going to be 5 times 10. Now, notice, again, I broke up 16 in easier numbers, right? So I'm like, all right, 5 times 16. I don't really know what that is, but 5 times 10, that's pretty easy. I can handle that. Well, that's 50. So 5 times 10 is 50 plus, we have to put that plus sign right there, and then we're going to distribute that 5 to uh, that 6. So 5 times 6 is what? Oh, I can handle that. That's 30. Now we can add 50 plus 30, and that is 80. All right, so using the distributive property to do uh, multiplication problems is very, very useful, and this is a critical property in algebra as well. All right, so hopefully this was an interesting little basic review of some concepts that most of us probably uh, forgot, and a lot of people think they understand basic math, unfortunately, better than they actually do, and they end up making a lot of mistakes. And it's really not noticeable that much because uh, people are just plugging in numbers into their calculator. And one thing uh, that's kind of interesting about using your calculator is if you don't uh, type this in correctly into your calculator, you can easily get the wrong answer. So you might be saying, are you kidding me, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I actually have to know how to use my calculator properly. Uh, yes, indeed. So there's really no escaping understanding these concepts. And hopefully this little video uh, you know, helped you out and cleared up any confusion. And if that was the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.